Hi there, I'm Pastor Candy Christmas. I am so happy you're here today. I hope you're having a wonderful week and I really appreciate you spending time with me today. Um, today, I wanna talk about Philippians chapter four, verse seven, and it says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, I want to extract uh, the word surpasses here. Um, the, the word surpasses in the Greek is hooper echo. The word hooper literally means over, above, and beyond, and it depicts something that is way beyond measure. Utmost, paramount, foremost, preeminent, dominant, lots of words there, incomparable more than a match for, unsurpassed, and unequaled. So the peace of God, which is unequaled, surpasses, understand, you can't, you can't even wrap your mind around this, how, how great the peace of God is that he has prepared for you. The second part of this word, okay, Hooper, we talked about Hooper, echo, Echo is, uh, means someone that holds something in possession. So Paul is talking about a peace that transcends, outdoes, surpasses, excels, rises above, goes beyond, over the top, any other kind of peace in the world. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you not as the world gives. So let's think about what, what kind of peace does the world give? Uh, maybe a, a false security in money. So I just believe that there'll come a day that our money won't be worth the, the paper it's written on. So we better have peace that is in Christ Jesus, not in earthly things. The, the world gives peace through medication, but after after four, six hours, something like that, the medication wears off. But this kind of peace, it outdoes and it surpasses all understanding because it, don't, it doesn't wear off. There, there is no expiration date on the peace of God. The peace of God will carry you through every trial, through every tribulation, and, and then, then maybe you go through this, this different situation. There's no expiration date. And God said, well, hold on a minute. I could give you peace for, for all that, but, but this is a new situation and, and I don't have peace for that. Oh no, it passes understanding and it transcends all, all situations. I'm thankful for the peace of God. Your, your peace and my peace was so important to Jesus Christ, that when he w died on the cross, not only did he die for our sins, and oh, I'm so thankful that he died for our sins. Not only did he take stripes, that with his stripes we were healed. Thank God for healing, I've been healed many times. But he also took the chastisement of your peace and my peace upon him. He, he made provision for our peace upon the cross of, his, of Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful for the peace of God that in any situation, whatever we're going through, the peace of God is with us. Now, let me show you this. You're going to love this. It says, it will keep you. This word uh, keep is the Greek word uh, ferrero. Not, I'm not very good at Greek. It's, it's all Greek to me. But it's a m military term that expresses the idea of soldiers who stood faithfully at their post at the city gates to guard and control all who went in and out of the city. So you've got the peace of God guarding your rest your sleep, your peace of mind, and anything that tries to invade your city walls, if you will, with financial trouble, news about your children, a doctor's report, 
The peace of God is, is, is like a military soldier that stands around you and says, not today. You're not going to steal her peace. You're not going to steal his peace. You're not going to rob them of the serenity of God in their lives. Um, I remember, I think I told you this not long ago, that when I was a young girl, my dad bought us a, a lion cub. I, I don't know, I was 17, 18 years old. And I, I went to lion cub school 101 here. I learned, <laughs> I learned a lot about lions, some things I didn't want to know. But uh, m my dad had a saying, he said, you can take the animal out of the wild, but you can't take the wild out of the animal. Now, I'm talking about this lion cub because the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, that the devil goes about as a roaring lion, as. But we know that Jesus Christ is the lion of Judah. So, so what I wanted to show you here is one of the characteristics of this lion cub that, that we didn't foresee was that he would claim things in our home. And, and you never knew what, what he had claimed as his own. And one day, he claimed the telephone. And I don't know if you remember those phones that had the long wire that was connected, you know, in the house somewhere. And ours, ours was black, and it was sitting on the, on the stairwell. And, and so the phone rang. Well, Samson, our lion cub, at this time, he may have been six months old, but he had claimed that phone, and it rang. And he had it in his mind that the thing that he claimed was his territory, and you best not touch it. And so the phone rang, and we went to answer the phone, and the cat went wild. This lion cub, he went crazy and fought and, and shielded and cradled that phone, and we weren't going to answer that phone. And I remember that my dad had a really tough time wrestling the phone out of the cat's paws. Why? Because he was protective, standing guard over his territory, the thing that he had claimed. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ the righteous, the Lion of Judah, Judah has claimed you as his own, and his paws are around you. He's not a tame lion. I'm going to tell you. He's here to destroy the works of the devil in your life. And he is cradling you. He's protecting you. He is guarding you. And anything that comes against your peace, he's here to destroy it in the name of Jesus. So your peace, your peace of mind, your sleep. The Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. He, he sings over you with, with songs of joy. He cradles you like a little baby. He loves you. Your peace of mind is very important to, to Him. And, and the things that pertain to you, those things that you have given to Him are important. He's trustworthy today, friends. He is trustworthy. But I just wrote down some verses of Scripture that I thought would bring you comfort today about peace. I, I want to read to you Psalms 29 and 11. This is King James Version. It says, The Lord will give strength to His people. He will bless His people with peace. John 14, 27. This is an ESV, but I like this. Uh, I like this translation. It says, I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. The peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. I like this one. Isaiah uh, 35 and 4, this is a New, New King James Version, says, Say to those who are feel, fearful hearted, Be strong. Do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With recompense of God, He will come and save you. Don't you love that? He will save you from all your distresses. Psalms 32, uh, 7 and 8, this is the NLT, New, New Living Translation, says, For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. The Lord surrounds me with songs 
of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway uh, for your life. I will advise you and I will watch. I will watch over you. I want you to know today that the peace of God, that God himself is protecting you. He's got his angels around you that are ministering spirits to minister peace to you today. I just want to pray for you if that's all right. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for every person, one of every one of your children that is watching today. And I pray that the peace of God will rule in their hearts and in their minds that nothing will be able to disturb their peace and their rest. Father, I pray against every demonic force that comes to wake them up in the night with fear, to give them heart palpitations and anxiety. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I loose the peace of God upon your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your family, in your body, right now, in Jesus' name. If no one's told you they love you today, I do. I'm thankful for our time together, and I hope you have a great week.